This video is going to cover application of proportions. This is going to be reading word problems and learning how you can use proportions to figure out what they're asking for. So this first problem, a painting is 15 inches wide and 20 inches tall. If it is reduced to a height of 4 inches, then how wide will the new picture be? You want to set up what I like to call a word ratio and then two blank ratios. So this part's going to be our proportion. And we're going to fill it in. We're going to have one ratio for the original painting and one ratio for the small painting. We're going to take the different numbers in this problem and put them in the appropriate spots within the proportion. This 15 inches wide is the width of the original painting. And then we have the 20 inches tall. That's the height of the original painting. And then we have this height of four inches. That's going to be of the new smaller picture, and that's the height. How wide will it be? That's going to be our mystery number. Now what we're going to do is take our cross product rule, and we're going to apply the cross product rule. We're going to do the 20 times n equals 60. I'm getting that 60 from multiplying the 15 times 4. And then the 20n is the 20 times n. That's the cross product rule. If you don't understand that, make sure you check out the other video we have for that. So then from there, you divide out the 20. You end up getting n equals 3. So the small painting's width will be 3 inches. Let's move on to another one. If you can buy three bags of radishes for $2, then how many will you buy? with $12. Well, the things that we're dealing with here are our bags of radishes and our cost. So they tell us, and then you have the original deal, and then we're going to figure out the new deal. So they said that three bags of radishes cost $2. So those first two numbers went together in the same ratio. That's not always the case, but a lot of times it is. How many can you buy with $12? Well, that $12 is the cost. And we don't know how many bags that can get us, but using the information, we're going to set up our cross product rule. And that's going to be 2 times n equaling 36, because 3 times 12 was my other diagonal pair. From there, you're going to divide out the 2, and you get 18. You can get 18 bags of radishes for $12. It's a lot of radishes. Hope you like them. So we have another problem here. The money used in Egypt is called the pound. The exchange rate is a dollar for six pounds. Find out how many dollars you would receive if you exchanged 18 pounds. So we're going to set some things up. We're going to set up dollars to pounds. And then we're going to set up our, we're going to label our ratios. So the first one is the exchange rate. And that's a dollar for six pounds. And then we're trying to figure out what 18 pounds will be. They ask, uh, how many dollars would you receive? So that means we don't know our dollar amount. And then they say exchanged 18 pounds, so that's going to go in the denominator. So we've set up our proportion. We have enough information to set up some cross products. So we're going to go 6 times n equals 18. We got the 6 times n being diagonal and the 1 times 18 being 18. From there, we're going to divide out the 6, get n equaling 3. So $3 will get you, you'll get $3 if you exchange 18 pounds. Moving on. Kim reduced the size of a painting to a width of 2 inches. What is the new height if it was originally 6 inches tall and 4 inches wide? So we're going to set it up. We've got our height and width, and we've got our original painting and our small painting. Now, a lot of kids will make the mistake and automatically put the first two numbers that they see. They'll put those in the first ratio. But in this case, the 2 and the 6 are not going to want to go together. Let's read through this carefully. They say that the height was originally 6 inches tall. So there's our 6. Then they say that the painting was originally four inches wide. So there's the width. 
The two is going to go in the other ratio for the small painting, and they said it's a width of two, so that's going to be a numerator. Some of you might be able to see that half of four is two, half of six is going to give you an answer. We're going to go through the process. They say, what is the new height? And we don't know the new height. So if we set up our cross product rule, we're going to do 4n equaling 12, 6 times 2 being 12, 4 times n. So it's the cross products. Divide out the 4, and you get 3 again. A lot of 3s in these problems. So our new height is going to be 3 of our small picture. Giraffes. We're dealing with giraffes now. An adult giraffe that is 18 feet tall casts a shadow that is 9 feet long. Find the length of a shadow that a 4-foot baby giraffe casts. So we're going to be dealing with heights and shadows. So we've got the adult giraffe, we've got the baby giraffe. We're going to set up 18 feet tall and its shadow is 9 feet. And then we've got our baby. They're saying find the length of the shadow, so we don't know the shadow. And it says the baby is 4 feet tall. So it's going to go there. So we can set up our cross products. 18n equals 36. 18 times n, 9 times 4 gives you the 36. Divide out the 18, and you get n equaling 2. Now, some kids might have said, oh, well, 9 is half of 18, 2 is half of 4. You could have done it that way as well. I'm just showing you this one way that works every time. They're not always going to be nice and obvious like this. Find the distance between Franklin and Victoria if they are 2 centimeters apart on a map with a scale of 1 centimeters to 18 kilometers. We're going to set up centimeters to kilometers, and we've got our map scale, and then we've got our incomplete ratio. So they're saying on the map, 1 centimeter is 18 kilometers. So for every centimeter on a map's paper, it's really in real life 18 kilometers. And then they say that on the map, Franklin and Victoria are 2 centimeters apart. So we want to find the real distance in kilometers, and that's our mystery number. Some of you might be able to do this automatically. I'm going to go ahead and do the cross products. We've got 1 times n equaling 18 times 2. 18 times 2 is 36. So n is 36. We didn't have to really worry about dividing anything out, because this is identity property. 1n is the same thing as n. So in reality, Two centimeters apart on a map represent 36 kilometers in real life. So we've got a statue. A statue that is 15 feet tall casts a shadow that is 10 feet long. Find the height of a bird bath that casts a two foot shadow. So we're dealing with heights and shadows. They tell us about a statue and a bird bath. They say the statue is 15 feet tall. Then they say the, sh the shadow of that statue is 10, 10 feet. Then they ask about the height of the bird bath. We don't know the height, so that's going to be our variable. And they say it casts a two-foot shadow. So we're going to put that in there. Just be real careful. Usually in that second ratio, a lot of kids will mismatch these. But we're dealing with a two-foot shadow, so anything dealing with shadow according to what we have set up is going to be a denominator. We're going to go ahead and do some application of cross product. 10 times n, 15 times 2. 10n, 15 times 2 is 30. We divide out the 10, and we get a 3 again. A lot of threes involved with these problems. So the bird bath is definitely shorter than the statue. Its shadow is shorter, and its height is shorter as well. It's three feet. That's about it. Hope this helps. Best of luck to you.